Okay, uh, before I focus on the brain, which will be the main part of my talk, I just want to point out that there's evidence, not just from animals, but, but from humans, that fasting is good for the body. It will reduce inflammation, it will reduce oxidative stress in organ systems throughout the body. And one thing that happens when you fast that does not happen when you eat three meals a day is that your energy metabolism shifts so that you start burning fats. Every time you eat a meal, the energy goes into your liver and it's stored in the form of glycogen. Whoops, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Uh, if you can get the slide back. It's stored in the form of glycogen and that's always tapped into first. And it takes about 10 to 12 hours before you deplete the glycogen stores in your liver, okay? So if you eat three meals a day, you never deplete the glycogen stores in your liver, although if you exercise, you can. Uh, and, uh, but once you deplete the glycogen stores in your liver, then you start burning fats and you produce what are called ketone bodies. Now it turns out uh, ketone bodies are very good for your brain and I'll talk about that in a minute. We think the reason, the main take home message of this talk is that fasting is a challenge to your brain and your brain responds to that challenge of not having food by activating adaptive stress response pathways that help your brain cope with stress and res resist disease. Why when we take animals and put them on an intermittent fasting diet, are their neurons protected in models of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease? Why do they perform better when we test their learning and memory in mazes? Well, if you're hungry and haven't found food, you better figure out how to find food. You don't want your brain to shut down if you're hungry. And in fact, that's what we find in the animals. Nerve cell circuits are more active. Um, some of the changes in the brain that occur with intermittent fasting also occur with vigorous exercise. Now, every, most people, and, and Jeff this morning gave a nice talk on showing the benefits of exercise on him. I think he probably found it benefited your brain, too. Okay, and um, so we're finding when we start looking at what are the neurochemical changes in the brain with intermittent fasting, they're very similar to exercise. Now, on this slide, the... In the upper left picture, the third boy on the right running, that's my son, he's in the audience. You can tell by the face of these three kids, they're in a, cro they're in a cross country race. That's a challenge, right? And these, they're probably saying to themselves during the race, I, I used to run races, still occasionally do, why am I doing this? <laughs> however, however w when they get done with the race, they feel great and they feel relaxed during the cross country season. My wife and I, it's very obvious, our son's mood was better. On the right, my daughter's in the white. Her mood was better during the cross country season. Why is that? Exercise and intermittent fasting both increase the production of proteins in the brain that are called neurotrophic factors. We discovered this many years ago, back when I was a postdoc in Colorado in the 1980s, we found that these neurotrophic factors such as FGF and one called BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, promote the growth of neurons, promote the connection of neurons and strengthening of synapses. Lower right. Okay, so here's the idea. Challenges to your brain, whether it's intermittent fasting, vigorous exercise, or what we're doing now, hopefully, if you haven't fallen asleep, is cognitive challenges. When this happens, neural circuits are activated, levels of neurotrophic factors such as BDNF increase. That promotes the growth of the neurons, the formation and strengthening of synapses. Also shown in the lower left, it turns out both exercise, intermittent fasting, and using your neurons, uh, using your brain, can increase the production of new nerve cells from stem cells, at least in one region of your brain called the hippocampus, which is shown here. I mentioned ketones, which uh, come from burning fat, and that happens during fasting. The Romans discovered ketones, even though they, had no idea, they hadn't taken any chemistry courses or didn't know what it was. Uh, people with epileptic seizures back then, they thought they were possessed by demons. And they found if they take these people and shut them in a room and don't feed them, the demons will go away. 
what's happening is ketones go up, and it's well known that ketones suppress seizures, and in fact, ketogenic diets are used to treat, even today, patients uh, with severe epilepsy. We're doing in my work in my lab trying to understand why ketones are good for neurons. One reason is they provide an alternative fuel for the neurons that boost the energy levels in the neurons. Recently, we discovered that fasting, by increasing BDNF levels in the brain, this neurotrophic factor, uh, can increase the number of mitochondria in your nerve cells. And I'm not going to go into the details of this slide, but the mechanism is very similar to the mechanism whereby exercising your muscles increases the number of mitochondria in your muscles. The fasting is a mild energetic stress, and the neurons respond adaptively by increasing mitochondria, which helps them produce more energy. And in this paper cited down here, in Nature Communications, we recently showed that uh, by increasing the number of mitochondrian neurons, it can increase the ability of the neurons to form and maintain synapses and thereby uh, increase uh, learning and memory ability. In addition to the increasing neurotrophic factors and increasing the energy, uh, neuronal bioenergetics, if you will, we have found that intermittent fasting will enhance the ability of your nerve cells to repair DNA. So right now, at, and, and also probably uh, exercise and, um, and also uh, intellectual challenges. And again, what's happening in this case, when you're using your neurons, exercising your neurons, uh, it causes a mild oxidative stress. And at the same time that there's increased oxidative stress, the cells are enhancing their ability to repair oxidative damage to DNA.